when I tell y'all that it took 20, not quite 30, 20 minutes, we'll say, to set up this shot. It's not a lie. Hi team, my name is Shasta, sci-fi cheer girl over on Instagram and greenlinenshirt.com in the blogging realm if you're into that sort of thing. What you're about to witness is a cliff dive into my stream of consciousness. It is not for the faint of heart, I'm kind of all over the place. I request that you let my obvious costume excitement wash over you. I promise that this is all heading somewhere, eventually. Here we go. Okay, kids, you are getting all of me today. Hi, <sighs> team. It's me. I'm here. We'll call this a trial run. A test vid, if you will. It is Saturday the 17th? Sure. Saturday the 17th of April 2021. Plague year part two. I'm all of a sudden very cold. So we are going to try to set up the weekend in a way that makes sense to get anything done. I just recently finished the Star Wars Tudor mashup which is posted over on Instagram. All week I've been trying to get the blog post done for that to give just a write-up, uh, the sources I used, decisions I made, how I flipped back and forth between those sources, and where the design actually came from. Uh, I haven't done that, so what we're going to do is put things into this planner that I use every once in a while or when I remember that I should be writing things down because I am all over the place. If you can't tell from my Instagram feed or any of my previous blog posts while also trying to fit in some gaming time or something with the kids. And okay, so what we have, I'll start by showing you my fancy Tudor planner. If I remember, I will put a link down in the description. Like I said, I use it every once in a while. It's very blank. I love planners. I think they're really neat. I don't buy a ton of them because I know I won't use them, but when they are aesthetically pleasing for my bookshelf, I'm more likely to buy them just so that it looks like I have fancy things. Uh, so set dressing, I guess. Planners are my set dressing. Um, but um, so anyway, oh, and I have a fancy pencil. I don't remember where I got this from. I thought it was the one that came with my diploma for my English department in college like 20 years ago, but I'm fairly certain that one had like the name of the college on it and it was a pen. So I got this fancy pencil. I have no idea where it came from because I don't buy fancy pencils. I buy like number two yellow pencils because I like them. I can sharpen them. I love sharpening pencils because I love that newly turned wood smell. We've gotten way off track and that is why <laughs> I am sitting at my work table talking to you and not writing anything down. Okay. So, uh, as you can tell from the work table, uh, this is my Hamilton Spencer pattern adjusted to my measurements. I already did the mock-up, which is not in front of me right now, but it doesn't matter because these are the pieces I'm going to be using. And then I made the mock-up. I traced a bunch of different sizes and then I scaled it down. I put it on, scaled it down and re drew lines and did all the things you're supposed to do. So yay, that process is out of the way. Maybe one day I'll show you what I do for myself, which is a blend of trial and error and some actual tailoring book telling me, oh, hey, you should probably do it this way. That's not where you make that adjustment. I do have a stack of sewing and tailoring manuals and they're very helpful. They were written in like the 80s maybe and um, they're very helpful and I use them when I remember that they're sitting there so anyway I have my Hamilton Spencer Spencer pieces all mapped out <clears throat> what I do need to do however is adjust some of the motifs so on the Spencer pattern 
they're on the Spencer jacket, the original, which you can't actually see. And maybe I'll try to figure out how to put this picture up on this video somewhere. Uh, but basically on the sleeves there, it kind of looks to me like a Christmas tree. I'm not sure the motif they were actually going for, but on the sleeve, uh, there is a Christmas tree looking back and forth swirly thing. Uh, so I'm going to be changing that into a stylized mercury symbol. Um, so it'll still be kind of loopy and I'm still going to be using, what's it called? The rouleau trim, but I'm going to be doing it into the shape of uh, what is essentially a, the mercury symbol, but with a heart makes it a little more swoopy swirly. And that's the general design that I'm using for this whole Regency Mercury project, which I realized I didn't actually mention. That's what I'm kind of working on this weekend. And just to touch on that super quickly, the Regency Mercury project, I have been playing around with for a while. Um, I don't know, my Instagram story highlights probably would tell me exactly when I decided that this was the thing I needed to do. But uh, the original plan was to just do a Regency gown similar to the Queen Serenity gown, since that draws directly from the columnar shape of the Regency period, from what I understand. But I wanted to do it for Sailor Mercury. So that is the design I started with. And then huh, uh, we moved upward toward the Hamilton Spencer. So I decided that I wanted to do a blue petticoat for the actual Mercury gown uh, to go underneath in blue. But I got really interested in Spencer's. Uh, there's going to be like a tiny little kind of tank top crop Spencer jacket thing that I already have a pattern for. Uh, I haven't gotten that far in the project yet, but I'm going to be uh, wearing that with the gown but I want to be able to do Sailor Mercury's um, mundane kind of uh, schoolgirl sort of uh, outfit as the petticoat, the blue petticoat that goes under her gown and a Spencer. So the Hamilton Spencer came along at exactly the right time for me to start this project, which I started pulling fabric for and did all the drafting for in January. Again, it's April now, but whatever, mid April, even I haven't even gotten out my monthly blog posts, like all over the place. This is why we're doing this anyway. So Hamilton Spencer, I do have a petticoat that I'm not going to pull out right now. Uh, I will try to po post a picture of it on this video. Uh, and it's just a, it's a bed sheet that I added matching trim to and it's blue so that was fancy and I thought oh this will be great it's this weird taupe I guess color but it was more of a test of the petticoat pattern it's great I love it but <laughs> turns out it's not the mercury outfit I wanted realizing that in Sailor Moon Crystals she has a gray sweatshirt I ordered some fabric from Silkwood. Very exciting. Um, I've ordered samples from them before. They're fine. Um, they're really lovely. I decided to go with Dupioni. Again, it's a sweatshirt. It's, it's a sweatshirt. Like it's a rough, it's not a rough material. It's probably a very soft sweatshirt. I don't know. It's a cartoon anyway, but it's a sweatshirt. So the fabric doesn't have to be perfect. Now the original Spencer, Spence, Spencer, the original Spencer, the original Spencer, was um, conceived of to be in a taffeta. I don't need taffeta for this. Like I said, it's a sweatshirt, but anyway, so I went ahead and ordered a very light gray, actually lighter than I expected or had hoped, lighter than I'd hoped. There were darker grays. I went with a lighter gray. It's fine. I love the color. It's it's almost white though. And when I got it, I, I, I knew it was, I won't call it a mistake. It wasn't a mistake. I knew what I was ordering, but it perhaps was slightly, uh, it's gray, obviously against their white. This is white taffeta here, which I'll only be using for the trim, the double can't think of the word now, the double piping. Yes. For the double piping I'm doing mine like a double piping 
words have escaped me. Uh, her sailor color. Okay, so theoretically, and I'm still not sure if I ordered all of the right amounts for this, so we're going to map that all out after I get this going. So the gray Dupioni is the majority of the jacket. The blue, and it's a gorgeous bright blue, and I really wish that I'd ordered the taffeta version of this for a petticoat because this is gorgeous. I had already ordered some blue linen uh, from Berlin Trowbridge because I wanted it to be not super fancy court gown. We're not going for that here. We're doing like, you know, maybe a picnic in the park on the, the eventual Sailor Mercury gown that I had originally conceived of. Let me go ahead and grab that linen. Okay, so this is the linen I ordered. I love it. It's such a comfy blue. Like I love, I love blue. It's not my favorite color. Green's my favorite color. Sage green, if you're wondering. This is a great linen and I love it. But once the silk came in, I started having second thoughts and kind of feel like maybe I should go ahead and order a blue silk taffeta because this is a super vibrant blue, which again, isn't necessarily what I wanted for the original project, but here we are. Anyway, way off topic now. So blue linen there. Uh, so anyway, this is the primary jacket fabric. These two uh, will combine to do the facing in blue and the one part of the piping. So I actually tested piping in two colors and it worked. <laughs> so I think it probably uses more fabric than I want to use, but it does work. I will get my two-tone double piping, which is awesome. And because our sail sailor color is primarily blue with the white piping, I plan to do blue facing on the inside of the gray and then white on the lower part of the piping and then more of this blue on the outside of the piping. So in my head, it makes sense. In the sketch that I did, it makes sense. And I have done a concept stitching and it does work, but there is going to be some kind of fiddling to make that, you know, really come to life. But the trim for this piece is going to take like the rest of my life. So anyway, and then the red, the red du peony is for the little, um, on the original Spencer, we're looking at these little, I think they're holly leaves. They look like holly leaves to me. Like the whole Spencer, Hamilton Spencer motif reminds me of Christmas. So like holly leaves, a tree, it, it just feels, and then those little berry things that everyone you have to stuff with cotton wadding. I don't want that for myself <laughs> or for my version of Sailor Mercury. Again, this was, this all came about kind of after I had already conceived of the project. So the only way I was going to do this was to add on to what I already had. So she gets two licks. They are not going to be holly leaves and berries and Christmas trees. Again, I'm going to be going with red bows. So I found some extant uh, examples and some fashion plates to kind of base my design on. The mercury symbol in a heart is going to work with the rouleau trim. On the lapels of the jacket where I'm going to be using the red just like her big red bow on the sailor outfit or sailor collar, I'm going to be making Regency bows with the rouleau trim, not necessarily as ribbon bows, but maybe. Back to the planner, which was the entire point of me getting on here and trying to film what is a vlog. For today, I had hoped to start cutting the fabrics for Mercury, and that's also going to include blue lining fabric. This is <clears throat> a broadcloth, 
quilting cotton. I don't know what this is. It's a very thin, lightweight cotton. I stacked all my layers together just to see how it would feel and how heavy it was. It feels nice inside of the jacket as a, an interlining. So that's what we're going with. Interlining, interfacing, one of those two. I know the difference between the two. I've been doing this for quite some time, but for some reason my words fail me today. And then I've got my horsehair, lightweight horsehair hair, whatever it's called, hair canvas. Uh, so I've got that. This is all Hamilton Spencer. So first thing I'm gonna write in my little notebook is cut Spencer. I haven't written in forever and my thumb hurts from something I did this week. So I'm like, <laughs> I have no idea what's going on with my everything. Uh, so we have that. I know there was something else that was supposed to go in this list and it's already escaped me. I need to cut the Spencer. Oh, so today is also a black orchid atelier, which uh, the costume, I'm going to Costume Skills Institute, I think is her um, kind of workshop series. Uh, so today is going to be Regency. It worked out perfectly. The universe is telling me, hey, Shasta, you should get on your Regency project. And so I am. But right, so I'm cutting the Spencer. I have the Zoom call for the workshop at one. And then I have to feed my children, but that has to come before that. So we're going to put lunch in there. That's a lie. We're going to do, I'm going to record this. I'm going to go play Shantae and the Seven Sirens because my kids are obsessed, but the rating on that game is T for teen, I think. And neither of them are teenagers and it's driving them crazy. <laughs> Plus they almost broke my switch last weekend. So two weeks ago, they broke my switch two or tried to break my switch two weeks ago. They were playing with the Nintendo Labo VR set and they were passing it off. So it really was both of the children that broke this and they passed it off and it fell. This has absolutely nothing to do with costuming, but it's fine. They were handing it off and they cracked the screen and I lost my entire mind. <sighs> anyway, so I took away their switch privileges and ordered a new game, which is T for teen. So they can't play it, but they're allowed to watch me play it. That way I can kind of monitor what's going on. It's hard to be a mom in the current any a parent at all, not just mom. It's hard to be a parent in 2021. But anyway, so, but we do play a lot of video games. They're downstairs playing other video games right now, but they can't play the Switch. And just so you know, they didn't actually break the Switch. I realized that I got the glass screen protector and that's what cracked, not the actual Switch. So, huh, thank me for my foresight because again, I don't let the kids, they're allowed to play the Switch. Uh, and I let them kind of do whatever, as long as they don't burn the house down or act like jerks. So anyway, now we're way off topic. So, uh, I need to play that game and then I need to do lunch for them because it is currently 10 50. I am already an hour past <laughs> where I wanted to be. So I plan to do this little background. So this morning I got up and I decided, you know what? going to start that vlog series because I need to make sure everything is in place so that I can vlog the process for my Princess Tiana 1790s gown. Oh, that was what I needed to do. Ha! I need to <laughs> update my whiteboard. So update whiteboard. Okay. So I have to make sure the door is closed because I can't hear anything with my earbuds, which relates to the story I was trying to tell you. And now I'm hot again. Okay. So I get up this morning, I decide I'm going to start the vlog, vlog series. The studio is not in complete and utter disarray. It's like normal everyday level disarray. So fine. I at least had a clean work table before I started pulling things out to get the project started. So I have my coffee. I 
didn't actually eat breakfast today, which is weird for me. I normally eat breakfast, which is like fruit. It's always a small breakfast, except for Sundays. Sundays are big breakfast days. This does relate to the story because it explains why I'm all over the place. So this morning I get up, I have my coffee in bed, which is what I do every day. And then I say, okay, I'm going to start the vlog series. First thing I need to do is go upstairs, record something like an intro, which is just me doing exactly what I'm doing right now, writing down what I need to get done for the day and then potentially going to do all of those things. And that team is where my phone ran out of storage. Not that I knew it at the time. Oh look, a time lapse of me cutting fabric. What the rest of the list should have included was gathering photos for my Tudor Star Wars write-up and starting the April blog post. I did none of those things, and the whiteboard still lists the Princess Tiana mock-up that I finished in March. I did fulfill my gaming time with the kids, and I fed them. Good job, me. Due to slight differences in how I resized the pattern, I decided to cut the blue facing and lining pieces directly from the bodice outer fabric pattern piece. Both the facing and the collar are cut in blue dupioni. I should have probably cut my seam allowances bigger, but we'll see how it stitches up. Stylings lecture was amazing and gave me a great amount of information for the 1790s Princess Tiana project that I'm working on. The talk was so fantastic that I almost decided to put the Spencer away and get back to Tiana's gown, but next week's lecture topic is the turn of the century, which applies to this Sailor Mercury project, and I really need some focus for that. you're wondering, I'm looking over my shoulder at the historic Deerfield Spring Forum called Invisible Makers, Textiles, Dress, and Marginalized People in 18th and 19th Century America, which was recorded the previous weekend. Um, it happened over Zoom. The speakers had a lot of information and resources, and I do encourage everyone to get in on these historical presentations while you can. In the pre-plague times, this level of access to academic topics was nigh impossible to achieve for a number of reasons that I'm not going to mention in this particular video. Suffice it to say, if you want to see changes in the dissemination of higher education and knowledge, even for a hobby, I'm using air quotes here, and you want the opportunity to affect those changes, you need to know where to start. Check for virtual events on YouTube, your local libraries, museums, historical homes, living history pages. Get out there, show your face on these Zoom lectures, and let people know that you exist.
And now, an extreme close-up. Hi team, it is Sunday, April 18th, 2021. And we're trying this vlog thing day two. Some notes from what I hope will be the first part of this vlog. I went back to review all of the um, recording from yesterday. I realized pretty early on that it was garbage, but I'm probably putting up anyway. Uh, it's important to be honest with ourselves about this whole social media thing. Anyway, I realized that one, the audio is garbage, uh, because even though I was wearing my earbuds for the entire motion detected at the front door, even though I was wearing my earbuds for the entire recording, they were only synced to my phone while the camera was on for about a 45 second test that I did. So that's cool. All of the audio is from the camera. Uh, didn't know that because I also couldn't uh, go back and listen to the audio during the record, or not during the recording, but when I went back to check the, the, I checked the test, I didn't check anything else. Right. So, because I thought I had it working, but because I had exited the program and gone back into the program, all of the settings reset because I wasn't using the standard camera recording. So number two, when I, <laughs> when I went to when I went back and checked, I figured out what all the beeping, I kept talking about beeping. Um, I think I talked about it later, but what I found out was my phone had run out of storage space. Duh. Okay. That's fine. Uh, this is why I need to go ahead and just get that camera because whether it's just to record YouTube videos or it's to take backyard pictures in my backyard of costumes while we're still in quarantine plague times or to just have an actual camera because I haven't had an actual camera in a few years. Uh, it's good to have. So anyway, but I went back to check all of it and I had run out of storage space. So I went from a 16 minute video of me explaining, trying to write in my planner down to like three or four two and a half minute videos where the storage space was just getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And then eventually it stops. So I had continued talking to a camera that, or my phone, which was no longer recording for another probably 10, 15 minutes after that, but happy, happy times. I ended up doing what I said. I think I would said I was going to do in that recording which was, I went downstairs, played games with the kids for a bit. I made everybody lunch. And then I came back up here and started cutting fabric for the Hamilton Spencer, which is going to now be part of the Regency Mercury project. Yay. I made dinner, played some more video games with the kids, sat on the couch for a bit. And then after they were in bed, I came back up here and cut the silk. The fashion fabric is a Dupiani silk from Silk Baron. Obviously not a historical choice, but this isn't about that. Most of what I do is, you know, a mashup anyway. So I've never worked with Dupiani before. Uh, certainly nothing as slubby as this. And I think it's neat. I really like the texture, so I have no problem with that. And I've got some good sized scraps to make um, little bags and things out of, but that is thinking far, far in the future. Um, today, today I need to do more Spencer stuff. Third thing I meant to mention, uh, with yesterday's recordings, if you, you can't actually see it. So there's a little black hole right there. That is a ring light that I have that I use frequently when I'm recording in the house or wow, well, when the sun just goes away randomly. Like I have lights, I have lights for a, you know, rudimentary setup. I have lights, I have backdrops, I have a camcorder. Uh, I have a mic, I have all kinds of things right now. Again, I'm recording on my phone, um, which is fine, but 
I should have used the ring light instead of futzing around with audio issues for an hour with, you know, only half the footage. So that's fine. I may or may not actually even use the ring light today. This is all kind of a trial vlog. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, but I did say I would put something up. So again, today we're just going to work on the, I have a list today. We're working on the trim. Now, part of this is going to be finally designing the sleeve motif, because like I mentioned yesterday or may not have mentioned, can't remember if that's in the lost footage or not. Um, I'm going to be doing not the Christmas motif, I guess, that the original Spencer has. Um, instead of the kind of Christmas tree triangle, I'm not going to pull out the pattern piece. It's over there somewhere. Instead of doing the uh, kind of tree triangle loopy thing on the sleeve, I'm going to be turning that into a stylized mercury symbol. Instead of the what I assume are some kind of holly and berry leaf motif on the chest, the bodice, the front bodice. I'm going to do bows reminiscent of the sailor bows on the sailor scout uniforms. And what else did I change? Oh, I need to do the double piping. I think I'm going to do the double piping first, um, because one, I have to make all the bias tape and two, I have to kind of suss out how I'm going to make this work with Du Peony. In my mind, it looks really pretty and I have tested it and it did work <laughs> on the test piece. So that's what we'll be working on today. Uh, you're probably going to see another time lapse. I might slow it down for the sketching, but no promises. <sighs> Here we go. And now you get to see me make many, many yards of bias tape and piping. Things are going to get crazy, so I'll take this opportunity to give you a little background on what I expect to be an entertaining little adventure. Not long ago, I may have mentioned to Noelle and Gigi of Costuming in Color that my biggest issue with putting out YouTube content is the editing. Over the last few years, I have used a fancy but severely outdated camcorder to record process videos, not quite tutorials, and general foolishness in the studio, in the backyard, in the basement, all of the ways and places that I costume, and I have posted none of it. I'm exhausted just thinking about putting all of the files into a cohesive masterpiece, much like what you see before you. Anyway, our dearest Noelle may have suggested that, duh, a vlog was the way to go. Still cautious, I went ahead and recorded myself in the studio with my phone, trying to do the absolute least, not because I don't want to get the content out to the lovely humans who have requested it, but because I have a family and a job and have made some questionable decisions in letting the costuming hobby consume what's left of my life force and my free time. So, all of that out of the way, I present to you a cautionary step into the shallows of YouTube. If you manage to find this video via my Instagram stories or my blog, congratulations! I'm proud of you! This will be fun for both of us, I hope. No promises on a schedule. And another note for this launch, if you're here for gratuitous fur baby interruptions, please know that we have fish. Due to evolutionary constraints, they tend to stay downstairs in the tank. I understand if you have to unsubscribe from my channel now, but if you ask nicely in the comments, I'll try to record some of the stray cats who chased the squirrels in our backyard for the next video.
Now, what you're watching is the well-loved method that I use for bias tape. To make the cut lines, I whipped up a two inch marker from some poster board that I had laying around. The lines are marked on the fabric in either heat erasable pen or chalk. After the tube has been stitched, before today anyway, I would use my bias tape cutter to zip through it, but apparently someone spilled machine oil near that box and I'm just finding out now. The machine tension is fiddly anyway, so I go to Old Faithful, my serger, to get through this yardage. After today, she needs some serious maintenance. Next, I hit up my favorite gadget, the bias tape maker, which is really just an iron with a wheel. Eventually, I give up on this one as well because I need to stretch the fabric as I go, which is difficult on a bias tape maker. I thought I had less stiff cording for this project, but after going through all of my trim bins, I settled on macrame cording, or craft cord, which I normally use for lacing. I've had this stuff on the shelf for years, so I'm happy to move through it so quickly on this project. As a reminder, I am largely self-taught as a hobby costumer. I make this up as I go because it's fun. This is what has worked for me. If your experience varies, you don't have to tell me. Moving on to the white part of the double piping, I increased the bias tape width from 2 to 3 inches. As with the other rounds of bias tape, I mark the cut lines, stitch the fabric into a tube, cut the full length, then iron while pulling the fabric taut to stretch it out for easier manipulation later. Now, this two-toned double piping ended up being a pain in the bum, and I don't see myself doing it again in the same way in the future. The biggest issue is that I was intent upon having both colors on both sides, knowing full well that I plan to wear the jacket open so that the blue facing can be seen. 
I do love the final look, but not at the cost of my time and sanity points. to the motifs, I used the marked template for sizing and sketched up a bow reminiscent rouleau design. I highly recommend the tutorial from Fabric and Fiction to see how this type of trim can be applied. Understanding that process first made it much easier to create the correct pathways with the cording that I had before getting ready to stitch and realizing that my idea wouldn't actually work. I used large pins and my felt ironing mat to map the final design over the sketch.
Each of the three bow lengths is marked with a sharpie so that I can take it all apart and cut the same amounts on the opposite side. This week, I'll get the rouleau stitched up in the red dupioni and start the arduous process of putting things together. Thanks for hanging out!